Okay, so let us start our classroom uh, management uh, review for our professional education. So na unang natin ay part one. We're in um, discuss natin last time via live Zoom. Ngayon I recorded in late and I will be just uploading this one sa FB group page natin. So let's start with the first slide. Okay, so the next natin I review is about the group guidance approach that was presented by Fritz Redel. Patandaan niyo yung mga pangalan na if you say group guidance approach, it was presented or uh, proposed by Fritz Redel. So, ano ba ibig sabihin nito? So, ito ay based on manipulating or changing the service behavior of students as individuals in group. So, pag pinag-uusapan natin ang group guidance approach, we're dealing here with not only the individual but also as a group. Diba? So, ano ba ang influence ng individual sa group? But vice versa, what's the influence of the group to the individual's behavior? So, yun ang ating manipulate in terms of changing both the behavior of the student as an individual and as, as, a, as a, an individual that belongs to a group. And then that is the group guidance approach. So, sabi ni Redel, it holds that there are three disciplinary problems that have uh, these causes. Number one, individual case history. Say iba-iba yan ng uh, environment ng mga studyante, iba-iba ng environment na kinalakihan, uh, family background, socioeconomic status, even yung kung sino yung mga naging kalaro niya. So, ibig sabihin, mayroong mga iba't ibang case history ng mga bata na yan bago dumating sa eskwelahan. Kalawa, yung group conditions. Okay, yung group conditions. For example, sa isang grupo, um, ano ba yung ano ba yung culture ng ano ba yung behavior ng isang group na iyo? No? Parang barga, daga. Pero hindi naman sinabi natin ka. It's a squad. It's a negative connotation. Sinabi natin ka ang squad. Uh, ano yan? Another term for group. So, make sure na you maintain a good behavior among the group of students inside the classroom. And also mixture of individual and group. So, may individual, may group behavior, individual behavior, group behavior. At meron din mixture of individual and group. Pwede kasi meron isang group, binubuli yung isang student, individual, or pwede rin si isang, isang individual student may influence also the behavior of a group. So, tatlo yun, ha? Uh, ulitin natin. Number one, individual. Number two, group conditions, the behavior of a group, or pareho, no? the individual and the group. Okay, what are the group guidance models? Na hindi discuss natin yun. No? Number one, we have efficacy in action. Number two, cooperative discipline. <coughs> Number three, judicious discipline. Four, skills training. Five, peer mediation. And six is positive action. Okay? Inayin natin ang efficacy in action. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng efficacy in action? It's based on the premise that if children are motivated to learn, then there will be not, there will not be discipline issues. Kaya, kung titignan ninyo sa lesson plans, very important ang pag-motivate sa mga bata na sila ay matuto. Diba? Kaya nga may part na motivation. Kasi kung talagang na-engage natin yung mga bata sa 
sa lesson, sa topic, na, in, na hook natin yung interest nila, then tututok, magpo-focus, magpo-concentrate yan sa, sa lesson, magpo-concentrate sa topic. Imbis na manggugulo lang sa klase, eh dahil very engaged na siya, very involved na siya, curious na siya, and uh, ready na siya to participate in the class, malalesan natin yung mga, mga hindi magandang negative behavior na pwedeng gawin ng mga bata. Kaya, wala na masyadong discipline issues inside the classroom. So, ano ang kailangan natin gawin dito? Students should be challenged academically. Kasi bakit ba nanggugulo lang yung mga bata sa loob ng klase? Kasi sila ay bored. At bakit sila ay bored? Kasi pwedeng, number one, um, hindi naging ganong ka-interesting yung delivery ng lesson ninyo. Number two, dahil hindi ganun ka-challenging yung lesson ninyo. Yung mga bata, gusto nyo na sa challenge sila. Eh. No? So, one motivation also of... Uh, in teaching is to challenge them, no? Ma-challenge sila. Mamaya eh, madali lang eh. Kaya, ah, madali lang, kayang-kaya ko naman yan. So, mabor sila, hindi na nila masyadong gagawin. So, that is efficacy in action. Next, cooperative discipline. So, pag sinabi natin cooperative discipline, we're talking here with the student and the teacher interaction how the student interacts with the teacher and vice versa, how the teacher interacts with the student. So, meron tayong tatlong types of approach in a cooperative discipline. Number one, it's the hands-off approach. Number two, it's the hands-on approach. And number three, it's the hands-joined approach. Hands-off approach, ibig sabihin, this is... Uh, walang wala. Uh, walang kakailang si teacher. Uh -huh. Hindi masyadong, wala masyadong intervention ni teacher. Yung approach na yan. Sa hands-on approach, ito naman sobrang may intervention si, si teacher. Meron siya, siya ang nagko-control ng and uh, discipline or ng behavior ng mga bata. And the hands joined approach, this is both the teacher and the students. No? Yung, uh, in terms of the management of the class, and they are, meron silang parang say, or very democratic yung type na ito, yung hands joined approach. So one of this, the judicious discipline. Uh, ito yung is based on the constitutional principles and individual freedoms. So, kung uh, judicious discipline ang pinag-uusapan natin, anong unang, unang kailangan natin tandaan? Pag sinabi natin judicious discipline, ang Bible dyan ay ang student's handbook, student's manual. Bakit? Kasi nandun yung mga... Uh, policies, rules, and regulation na kapag violate ay merong consequence na uh, or punishment na matatanggap si student. So, it's judicious discipline. Again, setting rules, setting policies. Okay, and then having this some kind of consequence kapag binayalate nila yan. So that is judicious discipline. Next, skill streaming. Uh, tandaan nyo to, it was developed by Dr. Goldstein and Dr. Guinness. Uh, ano ibig sabihin nito? Kung lang daw yung mga social skills ay hindi natutunan sa bahay, dapat daw ang skwelahan ang kailangan ito. Social skills. No? So, ano ba yung mga social skills? Interaction with others. No? Um, communicating with others as well. Uh, doing a task with others. That's also a social skill. So, kung hindi natutunan yun sa bahay, kailangan daw ang skwelahan ang kailangan mag turo nito. At merong apat na steps kung paano natin matuturo ang 
basic skills. Number one, modeling or showing. So, si teacher, kailangan pinapakita ninyo. Ito, kapag kayo ay nakikipag-usap, for example, sa mga matatanda, kailangan ganito ang gawin ninyo, very polite, very courteous, you need to be very obedient, very respectful, etc. Number two, pwede rin namang role-playing or trying. You ask your students to role-play. No, ano yung mga tamang skills? Okay? Performance feedback, for example, may ginawa na yung mga bata ninyo na performance or output, agad-agad, bigyan nyo sila agad ng feedback na kailangan ganito ang gawin ninyo kasi mas madadevelop yung skill kapag ka ito yung ginawa ninyo. Mas maganda yung execution ng skill kapag ganito yung ginawa ninyo. So, may output, pero ikaw kailangan may input naman doon sa ginawa nila. So, feedback mechanism ang tawag natin. But, and then, transference activities or practice such as homework. So, yung mga basic skills na pwede naman natin, syempre, ipagawa na rin sa bahay, no? Para ma-practice sila. Sabihin nyo, o yung natutunan nyo ngayon, kailangan, gawin ninyo by the weekend. Or i-apply ninyo by the weekend para ma-practice ninyo siya at lagi nyo matatan. Okay, so that's skill streaming. And the last is peer mediation. Si peer mediation naman, this was developed by Scrum and Crawford. Uh, ano yung idea nito? That behavior change should not be based on a process of coercion. Pag sinabi natin coercion, sa pilitan. So, hindi naman natin pinipilit dapat sa mga bata na ganitong gawin nila, ganitong gawin nila, ganitong gawin nila. Students propose solution dapat manggaling sa kanila. No, kasi kapag ka, uh, sinabi mo, oh, ito dapat gawin ninyo, ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Very bossy ang dati. Eh, no? So, a good teacher must also know how to listen to his or her students in terms of proposal of solutions na pwedeng i-accept ng buong klase. No? So, kaya nga siya peer mediation. For example, mayroong disciplinary problems sa isang klase. So, pwede magtanong si teacher sa mga students. So, sa tingin niyo paano natin mare-resolve ito? No? So, hindi lang puro si teacher yung lagi nagsasabi ng ganito dapat, ganito dapat, ganito dapat. Okay? So, ano lang ang kailangan gawin ni teacher? Pwede, siya, pwede niyang i-train yung mga bata as mediator and also monitor the process. So, yung mga bata na mag-resolve ba sa kanilang mga problema sa loob ng isang classroom. Pero ikaw, nandun pa rin. Of course, you are the teacher. You need to monitor the process, give them some guidelines, etc. Peer mediation. Naalala ko nung high school kami, ang guidance office namin ay merong project ang tinatawag na peer counselors. So, peer counselors kasi coming mga schoolmates ang um, nagbibigay sa kanila ng advices, nagbibigay sa kanila ng counsel. Kasi minsan, mas nag-open sila sa amin, sa mga kaklase, kaysa doon sa nag-open sila kay teacher. So, ito rin yun eh. Hindi yun dahilan na mas nag-open sila, nagsasabi sila ng uh, openly sa mga kaklase, sa mga kaibigan, at dahil natatakot kay teacher. Kaya, kailangan din ng mediation galing sa mga Class. Okay. Next, we have uh, positive action. So, positive action is uh, proposed by Carol Gerber Alred. Um, ano ibig sabihin nito? Sabi dito, individuals feel good about themselves when they perform positive actions. So, ipa-feel natin sa mga bata na they do something good. No? Ngayong araw na ito. Yeah, very important ang encouragement sa praise eh. Kasi kung palagi yung nakikita natin sa mga sudyante natin ay yung mali nila, they will not feel good about themselves. Madedepress yan. Wala na akong ginawang tama. Wala na akong ginawang puro mali na lang. Ganun. Pero, uh, if you take the good, or take a look at the good side of the student, uh, matutulungan mo sila, ma-encourage ma pa lalo na gumawa pa ng mas madaming mabuting bagay araw-araw sa loob ng klase. 
no? So, minsan ang ginagawa natin parang reverse psychology, ano? Reverse psychology, yung talagang gusto natin makita na lang kung ano yung magandang na ginagawa nila. Okay? So, ayan. That's positive action. And then, after ng group guidance approach, meron tayong acceptance approach. Ano ibig sabihin na acceptance approach? Uh, si Trail Course, tandaan niya na ang nag-propose. This is based on the assumption that when students are given such acceptance by their teachers and peers, behavior and achievement and behavior and achievement improves. So, ibig sabihin, meron na siya sa group, no? Pagka naramdaman niya na, ay, accepted ako ng, mga, ng teacher ko. I feel accepted. I also feel accepted by my classmates. Um, parang masarap sa pakiramdam yun at mababago yung behavior nila. At even yung achievement nila sa skwelahan ay mag improve um, Mostly, ang mga difficult to handle uh, students ay mayroong um, problem background yun sa sa bahay uh, it's either he don't he or she doesn't feel accepted or belonging to a family okay lagi na reject etc so kung uh, gagawin natin ay eh, si pa feel natin sa mga bata that they belong they are accepted here in the in the room then their behavior towards learning will also be changed and if their behavior towards learning will be positive it will be changed then achievement will also change so it will improve no so acceptance approach is also a democrat based on the democratic democratic model that students participate in decision and make choices okay decision and make they make choices ano yung mga for mistaking goals number one attention getting mga, uh, mga ksp may mga sadyante tayo mga attention getters no so, ayo number two power seeking okay. mga bullies yeah, mga power seeking din yan eh, because uh, they want to be superior to others even some of the student leaders no hindi ko naman sinasabi lahat may mga student leaders turn also that turn to be power seekers they tend to power trip uh, power tripping number 3 revenge seeking no so gaganti ako sa iyo Nagkagantihan mo yung kaklase mo dahil may ginawa siyang hindi maganda. Parang gano'n. May mga gano'n mga sudyante. And then, withdrawal as well. So, withdrawal, ibig sabihin, may mga sudyante tayo na nag-isolate. Nag-isolate niya yung sarili niya. Kasi, feel nga niya na hindi siya accepted. Hindi siya below. So, ito yung mga uh, four mistaken goals in terms of acceptance approach. Now, what are the teacher's leadership style? Apat po ito, we have the being authoritative, authoritarian, permissive, and neglectful. So, ito po, ito ay kumuha ako ng isang matrix na kung titignan natin ay uh, parang kinocompare in terms of parental involvement and discipline yung apat na so it's not just parenting style no but also styles of teachers as a leader so by the way we are second parents naman of the students kaya parang parent, parenting styles na rin. okay those that have high parental involvement or teacher involvement, very supportive. But in terms of discipline, very demanding. Ang tawag po natin dyan ay authoritative. No? Authoritative. Uh, ito yung mga child-centered. Okay? Child-centered, learner-centered. These teachers are responsive, accepting, high, warm, flexible, democratic, and supportive. Ang tawag po natin dyan, authoritative. So, si authoritative po ang 
democratic. Sumunod naman ay yung may low parental involvement. So, hindi unsupportive sa lahat. Dapat siya. Lahat dapat ang teacher. Walang, walang da, mag, uh, siya lang dapat ang pakinggan. Hindi pinapakinggan ng mga estudyante. Ganun din, strong, discipline, very demanding. Ang tawag po natin dyan ay mga authoritarians. Okay? Mga authoritarian, sila yung controlling. Sila yung mga teacher-centered. Ako lang ang pakinggan ninyo. No? Uh, rejecting, low warmth, structure, structured, obedience, and punishment. Meron naman ng mga weak, discipline, and demanding. But there is high parental involvement. Yung permissive. No? Permissive, ibig sabihin, sige lang, gawin mo lang ng gawin yan. Very lenient. No? So usually, ito yung mga, sa, sa parents, ito yung mga uh, parang nagpaproduce ng mga mga brats, mga spoiled brats. Kasi lahat, sige, pet. Bigay mo lang na bigyan. No? And then, ito naman yung mga pabaya. Very weak ang discipline. Very low pa ang parental involvement. Ang tawag natin dito ay neglectful. Indifferent, ibig sabihin malayo talaga. So, parang wala ang pakialam. Wapakels, ito mga neglectful. Ito po natin ha. Authoritative, ito yung democratic, child-centered, learner-centered. Authoritarian, ito yung kamay na bakal. Siya lang ang laging masusunod. Ito naman ay teacher-centered. Permissive, ito naman ay maluwag. Okay, napakaluwag niya sa mga, sa mga bagay-bagay. No? And then ito neglectful naman ng mga pabaya. So ito po yung kapat. Okay? So there is a basis of leader power and influence of a teacher according to French and Raven. No? First is the legitimate power ng mga teachers. Uh, kasi ang teacher, you are an authority inside the, inside the room. So, ito yung mga influence mo sa isang, sa, sa loob ng class. So, number one, legitimate power. Why? Because you're, author, you're an authority. You are the teacher. Pero, diba? Pero yung, yung takot ng mga bata, pataas siya ng pataas, depende sa position nung nasa harap nila. For example, um, yung kung, kung yun yung assistant principal, medyo mas mataas ang authority niya. Diba? Iba din ang behavior ng mga bata. Lalo na siguro kung yung principal yung nasa harap. Next, we have the Reward power. Mga mga teachers, magaling yan. Magbigay ng rewards, magbigay ng phrases. So, the reward power, for example, there is a good outcome. Okay, you give rewards, then that's one of the influence na pwede mo uh, ma-project sa mga bala. Coercive power, ito naman yung mga nananakot, mahilig manakot yung mga leaders, mga teachers, ayan. So, coercive, ibig sabihin, siya lang lagi ang nasusunod din. At, uh, lahat ng ginagawa ng mga sadyante sa loob ay may karampatang parusa. Expert power, it's influence based on knowledge and information. Di ba, minsan may mga teachers tayo na ano sa coercive, uh, hindi rin ganun ka okay yung reward power, even the legitimate power, hindi naman siya yung principal, assistant principal. Pero parang uh, may influence sa'yo eh. Hangang-hanga ka. Kasi because he knows what he is saying. Because he is expert of what he is teaching. So may influence pa rin sa'yo. And then yung tinatawag natin nga, referent power. And ito ay may mga teachers talaga na may karisma. Okay? So it's also an influence. Makarisma sa mga bahala. Although wala siyang ganun eh, Expert power, coercive power, legitimate power, reward power. Pero minsan may charisma sa mga bata. Okay. Kasama din po yun sa influence or power ng isang teacher. Okay. Encouragement. Um, 
very important to encouragement. Sabi nga dito, a child needs encouragement like a plant needs water according to Drakers. So Drakers nga pala ay siya rin na nag, uh, uh, nag-propose that encouragement is very good inside the room. A misbehaving child is discouraged child. And when children feel encouraged, misbehavior disappears. So, uh, pag sinabi nating encouragement, tandaan ninyo, oh, may i-discuss ko, tandaan ninyo na ina-encourage natin sila na gumawa ng mabuti. Gumawa ng mahusay. Iba yung encouragement sa praise. Mamaya, i-discuss natin what's the difference. Encouragement by creating a connection before correction. So, pag sinabi daw natin encouragement, there is a connection first before, uh, between, I mean, between the teacher and the student. Kumbaga, ang role din ng isang teacher ay isang coach na push ng push ng mga bata to do well, do good inside the room. Every suggestion in this deck of positive discipline tool cards is designed to help children feel encouraged and to develop valuable social and life skills that will help them feel capable. So, dapat maramdaman ng mga bata na kayang-kaya nila yung mga gagawin nila. Okay? So, because it will boost their morale, it will boost their self-esteem. Sabi nga, eh, very important po iyon yung mabus yung esteem nila kasi kahit gano sila kagaling smart eh, wala namang self esteem so bali wala rin yun uh, what's the difference between encouragement verse and praise teach self reliance instead of dependence on others si encouragement daw nagti-teach ng self reliance no kasi pagka uh, uh, if you just praise them no if you praise students, parang lagi na lang sila nag-aabang ng approval coming from the teacher. But if you encourage them, um, they don't need approval anymore because they're already confident that they have done their best. They have done good. Okay? They have done uh, what is uh, best for them. So, you can do praises after that, of course. Pero yung, um, yung confidence na nakagawa sila na maganda, magaling. At nagawa nila yung out of themselves ay because of your encouragement, ay okay na po rin na yun. So sabi nga, encouragement invites self-evaluation. No? Na, oo nga, kaya ko to. Sabi, uh, sabi ni teacher, kaya ko to. So, minsan, kailangan may maniwala din muna sa mga bata na kaya nila para sila ay ma-push na gawin nila yung gagawin nila. So, praise invites children to become approval junkies. Ganyan niya eh. Minsan, yung mga praises, uh, parang laging mga, mga, mga learners parang magiging dependent naman sa mga praises lang, di ba? sa rewards lang. Na kailangan may mag-validate lagi sa kanila para malaman nila na tama yung ginawa nila. Hindi ka tulad ng encourage them na yung gawin nila. At least they evaluate na tama yung ginawa nila. They even even though walang nag-pray sa kanila, sila mismo, you encourage them, sila mismo ay alam, they evaluated that tama yung ginawa nila. Okay, for example, I'm so praised, I'm so proud of you, here is your reward. Encouragement, you worked hard. You must be so proud of yourself. So, um, so encouragement was, was more of the children, was more of development of confidence among themselves. So, so praise another, another praise. You are such a good girl. Encouragement. Thanks for helping. But what's the difference? Praise, you're such a good girl. Encouragement. Thanks for helping. Because the term thanks is a signal that you that the student have done good. Yeah? Mas mararamdaman nila yun kaysa doon sa you just say you're such a good girl. Ah, no. Okay? Yung pala, kapag sa encouragement, thanks for helping. Ah, good ako kasi 
nakatulong ako parang ganun. So, how to use praise effectively? For one, it should be personal. Galing dapat personally sa teacher. Genuine, no? Hindi yung uh, makapagbigay lang ng praise. Appropriate. Okay. Mararamdaman kasi ng mga bata kung hindi mo totoo and appropriate sa mga sinasabi mong phrases sa kanila. Should be specific. No? Consistent. Ibig sabihin ni uh, araw-araw, dapat may words of phrases galing sa teachers. Hindi yung ngayon, meron, bukas, wala, sunod, wala, sunod, meron. Uh, use regular. Yeah. So next, uh, there are 50 ways to praise a child. No? So basahin niya, yeah. wow, way to go, super, great, good, outstanding, excellent, well done, remarkable. I knew you could do it. I'm proud of you. So, fantastic. Superstar. At pero tingnan yung number 49 and number 50. A pat on the arm and a smile can also be a praise. So, yung mga nasa taas po, ang tawag po natin dyan ay verbal praises. Pero po itong 49 and 50, we call them as non-verbal praises. Okay? So... What are the non-verbal praises? Na nakikita din ng mga bata kapag may nagawa silang maganda. Facial expression, you can smile, you can mouth, no? For example, uh, ayaw mo yung ginagawa nila, yung behavior nila sa loob ng classroom, sisimungutan mo sila. You can smile. Body language, you can do a nod. Hand gestures, thumbs up. Okay, na yeah, pwede yun eh. And soft applause. Okay? So yun po ang non-verbal praise, facial expression, and body language. Next, we have success approach. Ano ibig sabihin ng success approach? This is uh, by Glaser. Glaser. Teachers helping students make proper choices by experiencing success. Teachers must be supportive so that students develop their self-worth and succeed in life. So, uh, very important tong success approach na guide natin yung mga bata sa kung ano yung ginagawa nila. In the end, kapag naging successful sila, it's a meaningful experience to them kasi they feel supported by their teachers. Hindi yung pababayaan lang at at the end, mag-fail. Diba? So, kailangan itong success approach, tulungan ni teacher yung mga estudyante at the end na para sila yung mag-succeed. Yun. No, kasi mas masarap na feeling or experience yun. Matatandaan nila yun. Kaysa mas maramdaman nila na pinabayaan sila ng teacher and at the end, they will fail. Okay? So let's uh, discuss about discipline. What is discipline? This is a required action by a teacher toward a student. Given to students who? Okay. Pag discipline daw, ito yung uh, actions na kailangan ng mga gawin ng teacher towards students. If, no? If what? Number one, if they disrupt the ongoing educational activity. Number two, if they break pre-established rule. Number one, ano yan? Pag daw nang gugulo sa klase. Kalawa, kapag nag-violate sila ng rules and regulation. So, what are the types of discipline? We have preventive, supportive, and corrective. So, ano yung sabihin ng preventive? So, yan. Uh, natin preventive refers to strategies teachers use in the classroom to prevent students from behavior. Hindi pa nararamdaman mo pa lang na um, and um means may ganun nararamdaman pa lang may gagawin na yung mga batang ito um napitan niyo na kung sabi niyo na oops kaya bawal dapat bawal yung ganito bawal yung ganyan bawal yung ganyan so preventive ginagawa natin yun sa ano di ba preventive discipline sa uh, first day of class sinasabi niyo na lahat ng rules and regulations even yung school, ginagawa na yan through so orientation sa mga first year, sa mga newcomers, sa mga newbies sa, sa, sa school. 
So, para ma-prevent na yung mga disciplinary sanctions na maipato sa mga bata, eh, sinasabi na lahat ng mga rules and regulations. It's preventive. No? Next is coerce, uh, corrective, sorry. corrective discipline. Measures taken when students are not following the classroom or school rules. So, corrective discipline, uh, usually, Hmm, kapag may nagginawa na sila na violation yung ginagamit na natin ito corrective discipline and supportive discipline measures taken to assist students with self-control by helping them get back on task supportive discipline pag ganito uh, yun yung may ginagawa yung estudyantes uh, lahat na may kailangan gawin and then nararamdaman mo na itong isang batang ito ay manggugulo doon sa activity. So, supportive discipline is gagawa ka ng paraan para maibalik mo siya doon sa uh, sa task na dapat gawin nila. Okay? So, for example, ito, oh, um, Ella, oh, go back to your go back to your groupmates at kailangan mo ma-accomplish mo yung task ninyo. Or leader, ito sabihin mo doon sa leader. Ang leader, please give uh, L uh, something to do para hindi na siya lilisa-lisa. For example. Ganun. So, okay. That's it. So, actually, um, I want to continue this. May part 3 pa tayo ng classroom management. Pero, sa susunod na lang, natin gagawin yun. Pero this time, mag-post test na kayo. Okay? Ibigay sa inyo naman princess yung post test na lang. Thank you. Goodbye. Good night. Tomorrow, Saturday, si Ma'am Itang ang magbibigay sa inyo na a discussion to continuation ng kanyang a child and adolescent development. Bye-bye. God bless.